Hello, welcome to Tech with Mr. Westland. I'm Mr. Westland. Today we're going to introduce you to a program called SketchUp, which can run on a Mac or Windows platform and can even be run on a Chromebook. There's a new beta out and I'll show you some of the minor differences, but this project can be made with any of those programs. It's all free and it's all really pretty cool. So let's go ahead and first of all just take a look or a quick tour of the web-based version and to get to it just go to my.sketchup.com and this window will launch and then go ahead and click on the launch button and it takes I don't know about 10-15 seconds for it to go ahead and open up this all runs within your web browser you can watch the introductory video if you want it's only about a minute long we'll say no to that and just like the Windows or Mac version, you're going to have a person standing in the center. You're going to have a horizon that you can spin around or orbit around with. You have a green and red axes. Those are perpendicular to each other, and you can think of those as just laying on the ground. And then just like a flagpole, you have a blue axis that extends infinitely up into the sky and that's 90 degrees to the plane that makes up the ground. Over on the left side you've got a small assortment of tools. So for example this one is the eraser tool and, if you, and when you pause over it you get a little pop-up or a hint to tell you what the tool is. You select it by clicking on it of course and you can come in and, and erase geometry there we go. Some of the other tools are nested, like here's the line tool. So when you click on it once, you get the line tool, which makes straight line segments, or the freehand tool, which you can use to kind of draw squiggly lines. Likewise with the arcs, rectangle, etc. Over on the right side, if you click on any of these buttons or icons, it opens up the trays. And the one that I'm going to want you to have open is the instructor tray. And right now I have the arc tool selected from when I was showing you the tools on the other side. And you can see that it gives you a description of what the tool does, tells you how to operate the tool. And then most important, it gives you all the different modifier keys, additional keys that you can press while using a tool to change its behavior and we'll get into some of those later on. Down in the lower right corner is the measurements dialog box and what that allows me to do is put inputs in or give me information about what's going on while I am drawing. And then finally down in the lower left corner when I execute a command it will tell me what I need to do next. So there's lots of information there and most of it is going to be common to both platforms. I'm just going to show you how to get started using the browser version. Just click up on those three lines and come down and click on a new file. And choose simple template feet and inches. And I'll start a new drawing with a new guy. And so now when I put in a four, it'll make it four inches long. And we'll cover that. In in more detail in just a second. So let's go ahead now and launch the PC or Mac version. They're practically identical. And you're gonna get a welcome dialog box that comes up and like before you're gonna to need to choose a template. You have a much larger assortment of templates to choose from but we're just gonna select the simple template in feet and inches and then click on the start using SketchUp button. Now, it's almost exactly the same as before, except your icons are across the top, and this is called the Getting Started Toolbar. I've added an extra toolbar over here for views. that just makes it a little bit easier for me to do my presenting for you. If you want to open up additional toolbars, you'll find it right up there, and you can, you can choose so many of them that it almost becomes unproductive. Over on the right side, you've got your different trays. I'm going to close the components tray, and if you need to, you can make the instructor tray taller by just dragging down like so. 
In the lower right corner, we have our measurements dialog box. And then we have our information bar down along the lower left side. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to begin by drawing the body or the wooden part of the pencil first. And it is a hexagon. So if I come up to my rectangle tool and select this little pull down arrow, then I have the polygon option. So I'll go ahead and select it. The default is six sides and that's what we want. If we wanted to change it, for example, if we wanted just a pentagon, I could type in five down in my measurement dialog box, but I want six. So we'll go ahead and choose six sides. And I'm going to start my center right at the origin, which is where the red, green, and blue axes meet. Click and pull out. And I'm going to orient this along the red axis. So I have my direction set. Now I just need my distance. Well, pencil's about 0.3 inches from corner to corner, or vertex to vertex. So I just need half of that. So I'm going to type in 0.15 and hit enter and it doesn't look like anything happened but there's my hexagon so if I do a zoom extents which is right here this will magnify or zoom in on everything to include everything I've drawn you can see my little hexagon down there on the origin so this makes it a good time to use the select tool to select the person and just delete them and now when I do a zoom extents, I'm now looking at the true shape and true size of the start of my pencil. So let's go ahead and give it some length. The pencil is about six inches long, but I'm not going to use six inches, at least not for now, because it's so much longer than it is wide that it really kind of makes it difficult to, to zoom around. And we can lengthen and modify our geometry anytime we want. So I'm just going to pull up a little way. So I'm just going to make my pencil three inches long. So I just type in a three, hit enter, and I'll do a zoom extents again. And there's a three inch long piece of wood for our pencil. I want to talk just briefly for a second about what I am using to navigate around the screen because the screen's 2D but we're working in a 3D world. The orbit tool's up here and when you select it and then hold down the left mouse button, just practice that a little bit. It allows you to essentially orbit your camera around so that you can see all the different sides. The pan allows you to slide left, right, up, down, but the camera stays parallel to your object. The zoom extents is very handy because sometimes you just really get all goofed up and you just need to step back, so to speak, so that you can continue your work. Some shortcuts for this. If you hold down the scroll wheel on your mouse, it instantly brings up the orbit tool. And that's what I'm usually doing. If I want to quickly access the pan tool and hold down the shift key on my keyboard, now I'm panning. So those are some of the differences. By the way, uh, another keyboard shortcut that I use quite often is shift Z, which does a zoom extents. So that's the body of our pencil for now. So go ahead and do a quick save and we will continue on with the metal barrel that holds the eraser to the wooden pencil body. To create the metal barrel for our pencil, we're going to use the circle tool. And again, it's over here with some of the different polygons that you can draw. So if you don't see it, just go ahead and select circle or just press the letter C on your keyboard. And again, now I have a circle that's attached to my cursor. And as I mouse around, there's a lot of different places I can put it, but obviously I want to put it in the center here. And as I mouse over, I'm not getting the center of this polygon. So what I need to do to tell SketchUp where I want to be is I just need to come over and mouse over one of these edges and just pause just for a second 
And then SketchUp will remember that when you come over here, you'll get a center hint or center O snap. And now you can click, and as you pull out or push in, you can go ahead and draw your circle centered about the same axes or the same center as the body of our pencil. So I'm just going to kind of maneuver around here just a little bit. And at this point, remember it was 0.3 from corner to corner, or vertex to vertex, so I could choose about there. The metal barrel on a pencil is actually, it's actually crimped on there. So we just have to kind of find something that's going to represent our pencil and make it look good. So I'm going to grab about, oh, maybe about right there. So there's the start of our barrel. So now we can go ahead and pull it up. And again, I'll use the push-pull tool. And as I pull up, it wants to know a distance. So I'm just going to type in 0.5, because like I said, it's half of an inch. And that looks wicked distorted. But if we come into an isometric view, or rather, and then do a zoom extents here, you can see that for a three-inch pencil, that's about right. Now my push-pull tool is still selected, so I have a couple options to quickly create the rest of these sides of the barrel. I can go ahead and click, and I can mouse up, and then come over here and just pick a point on the face and it'll make it the same height, which is a half inch. You can see that down in the measurement dialog box. So I can click there, but an even quicker method is just to mouse over the area that you want to extrude and double click. Like this little area right here. We're, no, we're not going to fill that one in. There we go. Come over here, double click, double click. Oops. There we go. I just misclicked a little bit. And Let's see what we got. Yep, I think we got most of them. So now to just go ahead and close those surfaces. Remember, SketchUp is drawing everything in either line segments or surfaces that are created. Let me just digress here for a second. If I come down here and draw a line segment and a line segment, when I close it, it becomes a face. For example, now if I come in and select, say, this face right here, delete it, you can see that the pencil's not really solid, but rather it's, it's just made up of a bunch of faces. It's not a problem, I'm just trying to make you aware of it. So I'll put that face back by doing Control Z. And so now to complete some of this geometry, I'm just going to close those surfaces and make them what I call watertight to get the barrel of our pencil. And there we go. And notice it closed the top as well, which will be handy for the next step, which is making the eraser. To make our eraser, which is essentially just a cylinder, we're going to start with the circle tool because the base of all cylinders are circles. So I'll just come up and choose circle. And then as I come down towards this center where I want it to snap, I'm not getting anything that pops up. So what again you want to do, especially with circles, is just come and pause for a second over one of these edges and then come in and mouse and you'll get your center snap. So I'll click to start my circle and then as I pull out to make it the same diameter as above, I'm going to grab one of these endpoints right there. Now, what I just basically did was draw a circle on top of a circle and that's okay because now I want to use the push-pull tool to come up. So as I pull up, actually I'm going to grab this one here to pull up. 
There we go. You see, it doesn't make a, it's just basically extending the barrel. And that's not what I want to do. So over in my instructor tray, it tells me that if I press the control key, and watch what happens to the cursor here, I get that little plus sign. And so now I can click on this and start to pull up, and you'll see that there's that edge that defines where the barrel stops and where the eraser begins. Now the eraser is about 0.2 inches tall, so I'm just going to hit enter. I'll pull this one up the same. Again, I'll just come in here, mount, whoops, there we go. Mouse in about there, that'll be the same. And of course, being a really lazy guy, I like to just double click. Sometimes when you double click to, oops, but see, I should, I forgot to press the control key. So I'll go to Z. Now I'll press the control key. So I've got my little plus icon. There we go. Press the control key again. That doesn't want to come up. And that's okay. Go ahead and press the control key. Come up point two. Lots of ways to do this. I've still got the plus key for some reason, so I'll come up to here. Oops. I'll just put in point two and it'll fix it for me. And then again, the control key. And now I'm gonna look around to make sure that I have these arcs all in the right place. That I didn't forget to press the control key anywhere. Okay, that looks good. So now to finish her up, I'm just going to connect these endpoints and it'll fill in those faces for me. And watch what happens when I fill in the very last one. It fills in the top. So now I can take the eraser tool and erase these lines, hopefully without any consequences. And there's my eraser on top of my barrel. So next, let's go ahead and sharpen this pencil. To put the point on my pencil, I can approach it a couple of different ways. Now, before I begin doing that work, I just want to explain something here that you can actually go underneath the ground in SketchUp. But if you start to do some work underneath the ground or underneath the plane that's made of the red and green axes, you get in a little bit of trouble. So one option would be to use the push-pull tool and shorten our pencil, at least for the time being, so that it's up in the air and we can work with it. Or let's talk about the move tool. I can take and draw a selection rectangle around the entire pencil. I can click on the move tool, pick any point in space, it doesn't really matter. And as I pull up, I can move around different places. But if I carefully mouse, you'll notice that the dotted line is now blue. And that means that I'm moving it along the blue axis. And so when I click, my pencil's up in the air. So either way works. But what we want to do now is just go ahead and add about an inch to the length of our pencil. So we're going to come to the handy push-pull tool. And I'm going to pull on this edge, but I want it again, just like when I was making the eraser, I want new geometry. I want these edges of this hexagon to remain so that when I use the paint bucket tool, I can paint specific parts or specific faces, different colors. So I'm going to press the control key, just tap on that once. Oops, I clicked too quickly there. Pull down and just type in a one for one inch. And I've now made my pencil an inch longer. So let's rotate it around here just a little bit because now we're going to put a point on it. And the way we're going to do that, and again, this is another reason that I held down the control key or tapped it before I did my push-pull, is that I want to now take and use a new tool called the scale tool. So when I click on that, 
it asks me to select an entity to scale. So I'm going to select this face. And I get these grips that come up around it. And I can grab those grips and I can pull it in different directions. I mean, that looks okay, sort of. But as you maneuver around, it's not really what we want. And that's because we're not moving around the center. So I'm going to do Control Z and go over and take a look at my instructor tray. And it tells me that if I hold down the control key, that I can scale it about the geometry center, or right where that blue axis is running through. So I hold down the control key and that little red box shows up right in the center. And now I can take and taper the whole thing down. We'll take a look. Yeah, and see that looks nice and symmetrical, doesn't it? So now that I've got it started, I really want to get it nice and tight. And the quickest way to do that is just to enter a value in the measurements box. I thought I would try putting in zero because that would bring it to one single point. But SketchUp didn't like that. So instead, I'm just going to say 0 0.01. And there's the point of our pencil. Now again, there's still a hexagon on the end of our pencil. And it's, it's kind of hard to zoom in and see it. There, you can sort of see it there. But that's pretty close. And so what we want to do next to prepare for, to prepare for the paint bucket tool is we want to take and split some of these faces. So let's see, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use the tape measure tool and I'm going to click on this edge and while holding down the left mouse button, I'm going to pull down. Now I have to be careful doing this that I put it on this edge because if I don't do that, it could be hanging out in space. Let's see, I nailed it. Okay, so with that in place now, I'm going to take and draw a line across like so. And what that does is it splits that face into two separate faces. So I'm going to come around here and I can repeat the same process using the tape measure tool. But I'm guessing that SketchUp is just going to go ahead and give me that purple inference. I think it's telling me it's perpendicular. We'll find out here in a second. It wasn't purple, it was pink, wasn't it? There we go. Now I could be missing some points here. This is going to be tricky, so you have to be careful and you want to make sure that you zoom in. And finally, I'm just going to collect the, or not collect, but connect these two endpoints. And now to make sure everything's okay, I'm going to check on these different surfaces. So far, so good. And let's see, Oop, that one looks goofy, but it's okay. It's okay enough. In other words, it looks like it's a little off, but we can, and then we can take and redraw that, but that's okay. In other words, as I march my way around the pencil, looks like I zigged and zagged a little bit. And but that's okay. That actually kind of makes it look a little more realistic and not computer like. So go ahead and do a save and our next move will be to take and put some text on the pencil. For the next step of putting the text on my pencil, I want to rotate it 90 degrees. So to do that, I'm going to Go ahead and see, there we go. Use the select tool to, there we go, draw a selection rectangle all the way around the pencil. Then use the rotate tool and a protractor will come out and I'm gonna put it just right in the middle of that face. I'm gonna come out along the red axis and click anywhere and then as I start to pull up, it rotates the whole pencil and I'm just going to type in 90 degrees. And now my pencil is rotated and prepared for putting the text on this face. So we'll hit escape, the select tool, I'll click somewhere outside of here to deselect everything. And I'm going to want to put it about right there. Now that's not a very big surface area. 
So let's just do a little bit of a measurement here. And what have I got? About an eighth of an inch or 0.125 inches. So let's go ahead and bring up the text dialog box. And you'll notice in the getting started toolbar, there isn't an icon for 3D text. So we have to go up to the tools and come down and choose 3D text. And that opens up a box here. And whatever you did last, is or whatever the person before you did last is what the defaults are going to be so anyways let's just go ahead and i'll take you through some of this and you can experiment and even if you do it wrong you can scale this stuff and i'm going to deliberately do it wrong so i can show you how to fix it so i'm going to put in um mr w pencil company and let's see here, a height. Now the height is how tall it is. Remember we only had about an eighth of an inch? So I'm gonna leave it at a quarter, again, just so that it's wrong, and extruded one inch, that's way too much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put in, um, oh, say 0.25 or one quarter of an inch. Let's see, you can change the font here if you want, you know, what, you know, whatever, you know, whatever you wanna do and you can align it about the center. That's not super important either. And when you click place, well, you get this, I have to zoom out some because I made it so darn big, but it wants to snap to a face. So I want it to be on this face for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And again, I did it wrong, but that's, that's just fine. So now I can grab the scale tool once it's attached to that face and these grips should look a little bit familiar to you. So let's just go ahead and scale it down some. And then we'll use the move tool, press the M key, matter, click anywhere, just kind of move it across there. And let's see, we have to, again, we have to zoom in. It's way too thick. So I'm gonna press the S key for scale again. I'm gonna grab this middle grip right in the center, make it a lot thinner. Matter of fact, I can go into the pencil if I want to, but it's best to have it just come out just a touch. So you have to do a control Z. There we go. So I'm just gonna come in and just so there's, it's embossed or sticking out just a little bit. Working with some real small numbers here in SketchUp sometimes doesn't like that unless you really zoom in. That's about all it's going to give us unless we put in a number. So I'll come back out and I'm just going to put in for a measurement, what would be good? Let's say 0 0.1. I guess I have to pull on it again here. There we go, pull out and I'll put in 0.1 and there we go now it's really thin so let's go ahead and look at our different views here where'd my pencil go do a zoom extents there it is so okay now we can come in here and use the move tool and grab it anywhere and you can just eyeball about where you want it to be. And there's the text on your pencil. You can put a number two on it. You can put whatever you want on it using whatever font you want. Have some fun. And speaking of having fun, we're gonna go ahead and use the paint bucket tool next. This last part is the part that is the greatest fun because here you get the opportunity to make your pencil, your own. I mean, up till now, it's sort of been this gray thing with all these flat surfaces. So let's just go ahead and give it some color. And to do that, we'll use the paint bucket tool, which is right up here. Or I can press the B key on my keyboard. Or I can press the B key on my keyboard. And what comes up is the materials tray. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the display here to large thumbnails. Matter of fact, I'm going to make it just one bigger, make them extra large thumbnails. 
and you can see that one of the folders that we have here is colors. So I'm going to double click on that and up comes all these different colors that you can choose from. Now so that I can see the greatest number I'm going to go ahead and just switch it back to medium thumbnails and I want to use color E04 or a nice bright yellow for my pencil. Now you can go ahead and pick any color you want because here you're making it your own. But I've now got the body of my pencil pretty much done. By the way, the only reason that text is blue is because I still had the text selected. But I can come in and choose black. And if I come in and just zoom in carefully and click on the C, all of it goes ahead and gets colored because that is a, that's a 3D item. Okay, so I've got that part done. Let's go ahead and I guess we'll do the barrel next. Now for the barrel, I'm going to switch to metal. And let's see, what have we got here? There's brushed stainless steel. There's aluminum. They're not actually aluminum or steel. They're just particular colors and you have to go ahead and decide which one looks good, but you can redo it any time. So I'm just gonna select that one. Ooh, and I kind of like that because it's reflective. I know what you're thinking. When's this guy going to shut up? Because I want to get started. And of course, any of these can be redone. There we go. I think we got them all. Now, on my eraser here, see these lines that I have? I don't want those there on the eraser. I need them down here because if I erase one of these lines, whoop, I got away with it. Whoop, but I didn't get away with that one. So you can go ahead and erase some of them if you want because it just makes for a little better model. Oh, that one didn't work, so we'll just put it back. When I come up to my eraser here, oh, can't erase that one, but I can erase that one. So you kind of see which ones now you can do and which ones you can't do. So for the eraser itself, I think I'm going to go back to colors. And I need pink. I'm not very good with colors. So Let's try this panel. Let's try colors named. That's a little wider assortment. So that's violet. Let's see if that mouse over them. It tells me what they're called, but again, I don't see pure pink. Maybe it's up here in the reds. Ooh, how about, oh, there we go. There's pink. So, so I'll go through and color these in. There we go. I think we got most of those. So it finally brings us to the other end where we have the tip. I think that we definitely have to make the lead black. Otherwise it just won't really look right. And then when it comes time for the wood part, we do have some options, but I can tell you right now, they're not gonna end up super great because we're working with such a small pencil and SketchUp, to be honest, works great large or small, but really works better large than small. So let's go into see what we have for wood. And so we'll try, we'll just try that one. Well, that's not so bad. i take that back. So we'll go ahead and finish those surfaces. Do a zoom extents here. We'll spin around. I think we got most of it. If you want to, you can come up here and I want 
going to go ahead and match these with the steel, but I can't remember what material I used there. Fortunately, SketchUp can help me with that. So right up here in the tray, there is a little eyedropper, and that's for sampling paint. So if I click that once, and then come over and sample this material here, it changes my paint bucket tool to the same material. And I might have missed a spot or two here, but I'm going to pretty much call that good so that you can come in and go ahead and, and, and make your pencil. Okay, I got to tell you, there's one thing that's bothering me. When I look at this sharpened end, this wood part right here, that's just a little too, a little too elongated. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take and come to a side view here well enough so that I'm pretty much looking at it from this side. I'm going to draw a selection rectangle from the top right to the bottom left. And that will select all that geometry. And now I'm going to click on the scale tool and I'm going to grab this right here and just kind of pull it like that. How's that look? I think that looks a whole bunch better. And that was really easy to fix. By the way, you want to fix your, you know, the length of the pencil, you can essentially use the same tactic or the same approach, same tool, the scale tool, to lengthen it if that's what you want to do. So there's our completed pencil, as my military academy graduate sons would say. Hey dad, that's rockin' awesome. Actually, that's not what they say at all. They usually just ask, hey dad, when's dinner gonna be ready? Regardless, I hope you've enjoyed building it. I hope you learned a few things, and I look forward to seeing you again sometime on Tech with Mr. Westland.